Right, so uh, today we have quite a busy day ahead of us, four hours of uh, creating parts. We are briefly going to uh, just start on a couple of the drawings, just to show how to uh, put dimensions on threaded parts. Uh, but we are only going to show that, we're not going to finish off the drawings, we're just going to create the, the 3D parts so that we can do the assembly next week. <coughs> so for for this practice task, practice task 8, we're going to create a valve. And I should have had it as a, uh, a 3D print, but uh, I didn't manage to print the threads uh, correctly enough so that I broke them when I broke the 3D parts when I tried to screw them together. So um, I'll have to see if I can fix something uh, next week, maybe. Uh, we'll start off by creating a new project. And just like last time, we only need to create one project for this task. So I'll create a new single user project. Find the correct location on my H drive and create a new folder. Practice task 8B. Make sure that the project has a black check mark beside it before I click done. And then the first part that we're going to create is the shaft of the valve. So we're going to click on the new button, switch over to the metric folder as usual, and use the standard in millimeter.ipt file. Click create. So since this is a cylindrical object, this shaft, it's uh, uh, threaded in one of the ends, but we're going to create it as a, uh, a cylinder with different diameters in it. And what we're going to do, we're going to first create a sketch and afterwards we're going to use the revolve function where we take the part of our sketch and we revolve it around an axis and it's going to become our entire part. So it's going to become a full cylinder from it. So we start a new 2D sketch, place it on one of the planes. And then we're going to start with a line first off. Now I need to uh, make sure that I don't make the same mistake that I did yesterday. We're not going to create a construction line. Now we're going to create one that's below that, a center line. Because that tells, uh, tells the mentor that the line that we're creating now is going to be the axis of a cylindrical object. So we create a straight line horizontal and we're going to set the length of it to 283.5 millimeters 283.5 click enter and lock it into place there but now it's like way off with regards to my center point. So I'm going to use the coincident constraint and find the midpoint of my uh, center line. So the coincident one up here and then down to the midpoint over here and I'm going to constrain the midpoint to the center point of my uh, coordinate system. So this locks my this locks my center line into place and the center line is just as long as the total length of the shaft that we're going to create which means that once we start creating our outline of the shaft now we can start by connecting it to the end of the center line
So before we continue creating lines, it's nice to make sure that the center line option has been demarked again. So uh, that, that one can't be blue anymore, so we have to click it to make sure that it's not blue. And then we can create new lines here. So we'll start off by attaching a line to the endpoint of our center line here. And for now, we're just going to place it at a random length uh, straight up. Then we're going to pull, pull the line parallel to our center line. And we're going to set the length of this one to 35 millimeters. So 35. After that, we're going to make another vertical line, which is uh, also going to have a random uh, length because we're going to set the diameters of the different parts of the shaft afterwards. So we're just going to put this one up here. And the length of the next part of this shaft is a bit more difficult to put in because we need to, to calculate it a bit. So we can put in... <coughs> 283.5, which is the total length, minus the 35 we just created there, and then minus the 34 and the 36 in the other end. Minus 34, minus 36. So once I lock that one into place, it says 178.5. And as you can see, when I lock this one into place, it became longer than where I had my mouse pointer, so now it's at an angle. So I'm going to have to move my mouse pointer, make sure I lock it into place parallel to the axis. Once this one is in place, we'll create another short uh, vertical line. And then we'll create a 34 millimeter horizontal line. So 34 millimeters. And then one more vertical line going up. And then we're supposed to have 36 millimeters, and we can also see that it's then vertical compared to the end of our center line, which means that we have gotten all of our measurements correct uh, along the way here. So this one is going to be 36 and horizontal. Whoops. So 36 and horizontal there. And then we're going to connect the end of the previous line to the end of our center line there. So we connect these two. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit to, to uh, show everything a bit better. So now we've gotten the different lengths of our shaft into place. Now we need to set the diameters of our shaft. And then we use the dimension tool up here. And you will see when we click on one of the horizontal lines and set the dimension to the axis, it's going to automatically give us a diameter across the axis so that we can place the exact same diameter as it says on our drawing. We don't need to do the 
the length from the center line up to there and do the diameter and divide by two and everything like that. By using the center line function, Inventor fixes all of this for us. So I'm going to place the dimension and now I'm going to set the diameter there. And for the tip of our shaft, the tip of the shaft is threaded and it says on our drawing M14 times 1.5 and that means that we have metric threads the M stands for met metric and 14 is for the diameter so we have a 14 millimeter diameter in this one so we'll put in 14 and click enter and we can see now that it's giving the the length, uh, the diameter across the center line that we have here. A 14, yeah. Fourteen, yes. So the next part of the shaft, we're also going to set the diameter. So the dimension from the horizontal line and to the center line. I'm going to put this one into place here and on a drawing it says M20. So metric threads with a 20 millimeter diameter. So we put in 20 for this one and press enter. And for the next horizontal line, we can either calculate the diameter or we can uh, just set the, the distance between these two lines because we are supposed to have a chamfer of two millimeters here with 45 degree. So that means two millimeters uh, up. So we need a two millimeter difference between these two. So we can either set a two millimeter difference between there or we could have calculated what the diameter should be. So in this case we'll just put a two millimeter difference for that one. And for the last horizontal line We're supposed to have a diameter of 42. Now we have the outline of our shaft on one side of our axis. So what we're going to do, we're going to finish our sketch. I'll zoom a bit out here so we can see it better. And now we're going to use the revolve function. So we go up here to revolve. Click on this one. 
and it only has it can only locate one thing that it can revolve so it selects everything for us and the default option when you're revolving is that it's going to revolve it for a for a uh, complete circle it is possible to choose in the extents part I can set it to be at a specific angle for an example 90 degrees we can see here we have a 90 degree re revolution but in this case we want the shaft to be cylindrical so we want it to be full then it does the full circle around so we click OK and this is the 3D modeling equivalent of uh, turning a workpiece in a lathe. So it's basically the same, that, uh, same stuff that we're doing. Just zoom a little bit out here. So now I think we'll create the threads over on this end first. Now if you're going to 3D print something, uh, you're going to have to actually model the threads in there. So you're going to have to, to create the profile of the thread and you're going to have to create a, a spiraling cut along the cylinder that you created. And the way you're doing this is basically the exact same way as we're using the revolve function there. We create a sketch like we just did around a, uh, an axis that it's going to revolve around. And instead of using the revolve one we use the coil one which will do it in a spiral instead of doing it uh, in a uh, regular circle but in this case we're not going to 3d print this one we're going to to send it off to machining uh, in theory and when you're sending it off to machining you can do this a lot more simply you can use the thread function up here and I'm guessing that in, uh, in the next version of Inventor or the one after that or maybe the one after that again, the thread function will have uh, a check mark where you can check it and Inventor is going to automatically model them for you if you're going to 3D print it. Because 3D printing is becoming more and more popular. So it's, uh, it's something that they're going to have to implement uh, as they go along. But for now, for machining, all that we need to do is to click on the thread function here and we'll start off with the, the thinnest part of our, our um, shaft here, the tip over here. And we can see just by moving the mouse pointer across it, it's going to put lay, layer a, uh, a, a picture, basically, of threads uh, across it to show that it's putting threaded information onto there. And in the case of the tip, we want it to be full length, as it says up there. We have a, a check mark on full length, which means that it's going to do the entire uh, length of the uh, 14 millimeter diameter uh, section there with threads. So I'm click on that one to select it. So now it's blue. And I need to go to the specification because here it's not quite right. It says a metric profile. But it also says that it's following the ANSI standard, which is an American standard. But we want to use the ISO standard. So we want ISO metric profile. And we can also see from the original drawing at the start of our uh, practice task in the compendium that we are supposed to have M14 times 1.5, not times 2 times two is the coarse threads for this uh, thread size but we want finer threads for it so we want 1.5 instead so we're going to click that one and now we're going to click OK I'm just going to turn it a bit around to so that we can see it better so here we can see it's drawn in a picture of threads on it. They're not actually modeled. If we zoom in on them, we'll see that uh, it's still a cylinder. It just has a picture of threads drawn on it. But in that feature in our 3D model, it contains all of the information that a machinist needs in order to, to machine this part. So, so long as you're sending it off to a machine shop uh, to have it uh, manufactured, this is all you need to do and then show it in the drawing. We'll continue putting threads on here, but on this part of the shaft, we're only going to have threads for a certain length. 
So we can't use the full length uh, option on it. So once again, I go for threads. And I'm going to remove the mark on full length. And here we see I put my mouse pointer across it and it wants to create the threads in the opposite direction of where, uh, in the opposite end of where I want them. I want them over here, but it wants to put them over there. And that's just because my mouse pointer is closest to that end. So if I just move my mouse pointer over here, it's going to select this end instead. So then I get the correct end for my uh, threads. So now I can click here. And then I can set the, the correct length there. It's supposed to be 95. If I yes, I remember it correctly, 95. So we're going to have 95 millimeters of threads into the shaft here. One option that we can do, we uh, have no use of it here right now, but it is possible to use this offset function just to show you what happens if I use it. I'm putting in 50 here. And then I'm actually shifting my 95 millimeters of threads to more, uh, more into the middle of the, of the shaft. So that's a possibility if you need threads in the middle of, uh, of a shaft for some reason. Maybe you're going to use it for linear uh, movement or something like that. <coughs> but in our case, we're going to have zero offset. We want it to start all the way at the end there. We're, going, we're supposed to, to screw it into something. And then it needs to start at the end of the shaft. We're not quite done yet. We need to go to specification. We can see that once again, it's chosen the ANSI uh, profile. So we're going to switch to isometric. And since, since we have a diameter of 20 on our cylindrical parts, it automatically chooses uh, 20 uh, millimeters. So we don't need to do anything with the size. But we do need to do something with the designation because this one is also supposed to be times 1.5. So it's supposed to have finer threads. So M20 times 1.5. Then we can click OK. And we've got both of the diameters threaded. Now the only thing that's missing on this one is uh, creating a chamfer over here and a chamfer at the end there. So we'll do the easy one first, the 45 degree one. So we'll go for the chamfer option. And two millimeters is the uh, default option. So it's going to fit perfectly right away. We select the outer edge there and we get a, a uh, 45 millimeter, a 45 degree uh, chamfer on it. So we click OK. Once that is done, we can turn our model around here. Just going to zoom in a bit here. Want me to turn it? Zoom out. The chamfer part. Uh, two millimeter for Tvengar. <laughs> you just use the, the chamfer option on the edge there, and it's the standard. Uh, the default options. So we haven't done any chamfers yet, so it's going to be on the default option anyway. And luckily it was the default option we needed, so it's just to apply it to the edge. Right, so for the next chamfer here, that one's going to be a bit more complicated to put into place. So we're still going to use the chamfer option. But the one we placed with the default options over here, that was an equal distance. 
so that it went uh, two millimeters in uh, both directions and in a 90 degree angle that makes it means that we get a 40 45 degree angle on our chamfer now we need to use the third option here which is two distances so we're going to put this one in here and we're going to select this edge on the shaft and I'm going to zoom in a bit here so that we can see it more clearly and it's now put up two arrows here and these arrows are showing which direction we're putting our dimension in so I think we'll start off with uh, the this dimension because that is the silver arrow in this case so if I switch over to this dimension it's also going to switch the colors of my arrows so now it says orange on this arrow and that is this dimension over here and according to our drawing we're supposed to have 10 millimeters on this one so I put in 10 and we can see we get a really steep chamfer on our uh, shafts end so then we'll start looking at the other dimension here so when I click back here it's also going to change the color of these uh, two arrows so when I click back here it's this arrow that's orange and it's always the orange arrow that shows us uh, which dimension we're working with and this is the dimension from from the edge of the shaft and towards the the center of it and what we're going to do here we're going to end up with a total diameter of 35.5 so we're going to do a small math equation in here. We'll start off with a parenthesis and the total diameter, which was 42 millimeters. We're going to subtract the new diameter that we're supposed to have, 35.5. 35.5. And we're going to finish off the parenthesis. We need to put the parenthesis in there because now we've done twice as much as we're supposed to have. So we need to divide it by two. And if we don't have the parenthesis in there, Inventor is going to do 42 by itself and then it's going to subtract half of 35.5 it's not going to do the subtraction first and then divide by two so that's why we need the parenthesis in there it's just to to make sure that the inventor is doing the the correct math for us so just let you get a chance to catch up Once you've gotten it in place, you can just press enter or OK. And then we've gotten the chamfer in place. And we can see, just by looking at it, we can see that it's a, a much steeper uh, uh, angle than, than uh, what we regularly use. Because normally we use a 45 degree angle. That's the easiest chamfer to put into place. <coughs> so if I zoom out a bit, we can see the entire shaft. And we're not going to bother with changing the material or anything right now because uh, the, the important thing is that we have the 3D model in place for our assembly. So now we're going to save it and we're going to start a drawing just to show how we uh, set dimensions to our, uh, our uh, threads. So I'll save it as shaft. And then I'll click on the new button up in the corner. And I'll go down to the ISO.IDW file. 
and create. I'll set my base view. And just to make it easier to see on my screen, I'm just going to uh, increase the scale once. Then I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Because as you can see here, we have here we have the regular shaft, the regular cylindrical parts, just going through here, and then we get over to the threads, and now we suddenly have double lines here. And the point with these double lines is to show us the the maximum diameter of the threads and the minimum diameter of the threads. So we are getting the minimum diameter shown inside the material here. So that's that's how far into the material that the uh, thread cutting machines are going to cut. When we're going to set our dimensions here, we're going over to the annotate part. And we're not going to use regular dimension as we would for, for just the shaft part of it. We're going to use the one that is named hole and thread. That is why we have this function. So we click on hole and thread. And in this case, when we have external threads or threads in general, we can click on the edges of the threads, one edge, then the other, and then we get it shown as if it was a, a diameter measurement. And it's, it's already putting in the information we need, metric threads, 14 millimeter diameter, and a pitch of 1.5. That's what we need to show when we have threads as a minimum. We are using the hole and thread function and we already know that when we are creating holes we can double click on them and uh, maybe add a quantity note to show that we have several holes. And there is quite a lot of information possible to add here. So if we just double click it. Didn't want to do that. weird. Is that only when we have it like this? It might be that this is something to do with uh, Inventor 2017, that they've changed the function of this one. But uh, you are supposed to be able to double click it, just like we do with uh, whole information, uh, to add more. So that was a bit weird. Yeah, we have a couple that uh, doesn't work properly. But at least when you double click it, you get up the same window as you do when you uh, double click a uh, whole information. And you have loads of buttons where you can add extra information to it. <coughs> Usually, it's not necessary to add uh, that information, but sometimes it, uh, it can be nice to, to make sure that if it's a fairly special design that you're making, uh, it's sometimes necessary to make it absolutely clear what it is that you're intending to have there. <coughs> but at least it's the hole and thread function that you're going to put in. I think in the break I'm going to restart my computer just in case, uh, in hopes that it's going to work afterwards. I'll just quickly save the drawing. Then we can uh, start up another part. So we'll click on new, standard millimeters, create. And the next part of the valve, according to the compendium, is that we're going to create bolts and nuts 
uh, to connect our valve parts, uh, our flange parts. But we're not going to actually model these, even though we've got them in there. If you want to, for practice sake, you are uh, free to model them later on. Uh, but now we're constrained for time, because in the assembly we're going to add them from the library. So we're going to add uh, pre-made models into our assembly. Because they are, they are made according to stan uh, certain standards, so we can just uh, fetch them from a library instead, which makes our lives a lot easier when we can do stuff like that. <coughs> so we'll continue on until we get to uh, what's called part five in the compendium, the valve flange, which is basically the top part of our valve. And we'll start off with a regular 2D sketch. We'll place it here. And as we can see, the, the flange part of this part is just a circular disk. So what we do to start off with is just set a circle in our center. And it's supposed to have a diameter of 125. out a bit. So a circle of 125 millimeters in diameter. We click finish sketch and then we're going to extrude it. And it's supposed to be 17 millimeters thick. So 17 and then we'll click OK. So we've got it in place. I think we'll do a break there and I'll try to restart my uh, computer in hopes that Inventor will behave correctly afterwards. Then we're back from the break. I've uh, managed to restart the computer, so we'll see if, if it's going to behave this time. Uh, we're going to start creating the, uh, the tip of, or the top of uh, this uh, valve. So we're going to start a new sketch and we're going to place it on top of the circular disk. Rotate it. And what we're going to create now is a rectangle across here. But we're not going to use the corner to corner rectangle. We're going to use the one where we can place our center point in the center of the disk. So we're going to use the drop-down menu, and we're using the two-point center rectangle. We'll attach the center point of our rectangle to the center of our disk. Pull it out a bit here, and this rectangle is to be 60 by 40 millimeters. So we put in 60, press tab, put in 40, press tab. And then we've locked it into place, and we'll click Enter. When that is done, we click Finish Sketch. And we're going to extrude it. And it's supposed to be 80 millimeters tall, so 80 millimeters tall, and we'll click OK. But it's not supposed to be a, a rectangular box, it's supposed to be hollowed out. So we're going to have to create a new sketch, and we need to choose the largest side, not the smaller side, but the larger side, the one that is 60 millimeters wide. So we'll start a new sketch, and we'll place it on that side of the box. And now just to show you a neat trick that you can do. In this case, it's not necessary, but it's going to be necessary later on when you're doing more complex parts and modeling them. Because right now, a small part of the disk is actually protruding from our sketch here. 
and you might end up in situations where you have parts of the sketch covering, uh, being covered by other parts of the uh, drawing, other parts of the 3D model. So what you can do then is use the F7 button on your keyboard, which is a shortcut, and then it's going to cut away all of the material that's in your way. So it's going to cut all the way down to the plane where you've placed your sketch. So that nothing is in the way, it's going to be much easier to, to place all of your dimensions. And if you don't want that, you just press F7 once more, and it's going to pop back again. <clears throat> in this case, we're just going to use the project geometry. And we're going to click on the flat of our box so that we get the yellow lines going across it or around it. And now we're going to create another rectangle, but this time we'll do a two-point rectangle. And we're going to place it randomly inside the yellow square. We're going to lock it in place with dimensions now afterwards. Because this new rectangle is supposed to be 10 millimeters from the outer edge all the way around. So that we use dimension. We'll put one up top here first. And we set it to 10 millimeters. So now we've locked it to be 10 millimeters from the uh, upper edge. Then we'll also do the same for the sides. And instead of writing in 10 for each of them, we can also just press on the previous one. And we continue all the way around. Whether you click them like I have done, or if you write 10 millimeters for each uh, individual dimension, that doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, yeah, 80 total height, yeah. So once you've gotten the dimensions into place, you can press finish sketch. And then we're going to use extrude to make a cut through our box. So in this case, Inventor has several uh, outlines to, to choose from, so it's not going to choose anything right off. 
it waits until you do it for it. So we click on the middle there, and it wants to add material to it. That's not what we want. We want to cut instead. So we need to go up to the middle option up there, which is cut. Once we click that one, it's going to reverse the direction and cut through the material. We can also change the distance and set it to be all. Then it's going to cut through all of our material. Once you've set this, you press OK. And according to our original drawing, all of the edges on uh, this, uh, this box is going now to be, be rounded off to a radius of 5. So we're going to have to use fillet on quite a lot of edges. So we're going to uh, not have a 2 millimeter fillet, but a 5 millimeter fillet. And what we're going to do is basically select all of the edges. There is one way that we can make this a little bit quicker, and that is if we do the select mode over here and we click on feature instead then we can select our previous extrusion here and we click on it it did all of the four edges inside it we can also click on loop to get the outer edges here all the way around in one go and we can use edge to select single edges All of the edges, both inside our cutout and around everything, except the edges against the circular disc, are going to have a fillet of 5 millimeters.
Once you've managed to select all of the edges, you can just press OK. And we get nice rounded edges on everything. So now the only thing that we're missing from uh, this part is a couple of holes that we're going to put through it. And we're going to start off with putting a clearance hole up top here. So we're going to use the hole function. And we're going to use linear placement. We're going to place the hole on top of the part here. So on the top face. And now we need to give two references and the distance from these references. And we want this hole to be centered in the middle of our part. So I'm going to click on the edge of the blue square. Click on the edge there. And the total thickness of our box was 40. But we put... Uh, an R5 fillet on each end, so now we are down to 30. So we do 30 divided by 2. Didn't want to do that today either. So 30 divided by 2 to set that one. For the next reference, we're going to click uh, the, uh, the edge normal to it. And origin, the original box has 60 millimeters in width, but again we have the 5 millimeter fillets on there. So that means that this top pair is only 50 millimeters wide. So again we do 50 divided by 2. So 50 and divide by 2. And then we've placed it in the middle. Now we're not going to set the diameter directly. We're going to use one of the options down here. So we're going to use the one named clearance hole. So the one over here should, should say clearance hole also when I hover across it. clearance hole it says. So we select clearance hole over there and we have to select which standard we're going to follow and again we don't use the ANSI one so we're going to go down to the ISO standard And then we have to put in what kind of fastener type is going through here. So basically what kind of bolts are we going to put through. We're not going to put the bolt through this hole. We're going to put the shaft through it. But the shaft is created with M20 threads. So we can just choose a regular hexagonal head cap screw. And if we set the size of it to M20... That's going to be the same thread size as our shaft. The last option we have down there is the fitting. Because now we can see with a normal fit, we have 22 millimeter hole. And we know that our threads, they are only going to be 20 millimeter in diameter. So we have a full, uh, full millimeter clearance all, all the way around. But in this case, we want a close fit. So we're going to change it to close. And then we can see up here that the diameter has also changed to 21 instead. So now we have only uh, half a millimeter clearance all the way around. 
So it means that it's, it's not going to be able to move a lot inside the hole, but it's still going to be able to slide right through it without any obstructions, no collisions of materials. There's one more thing we need to do before we click OK, and that is that our clearance hole is going all the way through right now. And we're only going to have a clearance hole on the top part because we want threads down here to be able to screw the uh, shaft into the top. So we need to make sure that our, our hole doesn't go through all, so termination. Then we can either write in the distance which will be the thickness up here of 10 millimeters, or we can select two and then flip our model and click on the surface inside, on the underside of, uh, of where we're creating a hole. Because then it will create a hole to that surface. So it's only going to create a hole directly through there. If you've gotten all of this into place, you can click, click OK. I'm just going to leave it up a little bit until we have everyone on the same page here. So then we'll continue on to the next hole. So I'll just click OK here. And I'm going to flip my view so that we can see it's only, it's only created a hole through the top and not through the bottom. And if you're wondering where all of the lines went, they're basically still there, but for some reason Inventor doesn't want to show them. I think if I zoom far enough in, they reappear. It's just a small glitch on this computer, I think. The next hole we're going to create is the hole through the center with threads for our shaft. So we're going to flip our, our uh, uh, part around. We're going to use the hole function again. But now we're going to use concentric placement. So we're going to use the drop down menu and choose concentric. We click on the bottom of our part. And then we click on the cylindrical uh, edge that's going to place it in the center. <clears throat> on this one, we're going to uh, let the hole go all the way through. So we're going to change the termination to through all. But this isn't supposed to be a clearance hole. We're supposed to make a threaded hole on this one. So we need to go over to this option. It says a tapped hole. So we click on tapped hole there and we can see that we get a slightly different uh, menu. And again we don't want ANSI threads. So we'll go down to isometric profile. And we're not supposed to have 22 millimeter size either. We're supposed to have a 20 millimeter size. The reason why it chose 22 was that the diameter of our previous hole was 21. 
and there is no M21 threads. There is M20 and then M22. So then it jumped to the larger one. But we are supposed to have M20 in this case. And we can't have M20 times 2.5 in pitch because the threads on our shaft is times 1.5. So we need to switch the designation to 1.5. We can keep the option of having full depth in this case because we want the entire hole to be threaded. If for some reason we only wanted parts of our hole to be threaded, we would have to uncheck full depth and then we would have to specify how deep uh, the threads were going to go into our hole. I'm just going to show it by unchecking there. Then you can see we suddenly have uh, an extra depth that we can set there for, for the uh, depth of our threads. In this case, we're going to use full depth. So that's the one we want. You also have the possibility of switching the uh, turn direction of your threads. So right hand is the regular one. Then when you're tightening your, uh, your bolt or screw, then you're uh, rotating it clockwise. That's the right hand. Uh, when you're untightening it, you're rotating it anti-clockwise. If you use left hand, it's the other way around. You will be tightening it, uh, tightening it anti-clockwise and loosening it clockwise. And I mentioned it briefly in uh, in uh, subsea technology that uh, you might use left hand in some cases where uh, rotation might cause the screw to uh, to loosen itself. So in this case, that's not going to be a problem. So we're going to use right hand. That is always the default option that we use. It's only when it's absolutely necessary that we use left hand threads. I'm just going to flip it a bit around here so that we can see. <clears throat> I've set the termination to through all. I think it was changed when I uh, unchecked full depth there. So when I have the termination as through all, you would have thought that it would have gone all the way through. But the hole up top here is, uh, has a larger diameter because that's 21 instead of 20. So it's not cutting anything in the top part. So it's only showing a cut up to here. Once this is done, we can click OK. And we can see inside our hole that it's uh, put the uh, picture of threads inside it. The last part that we're going to do on this model is to place the four holes on the flange, which are going to be used to bolt it to the valve housing. So we're going to create a sketch, and we're going to place it on, on the disc itself. And we're going to use the point function to place a point. So I click on the point function and I'm going to place a point over here. I'm just going to place one point. Then I'm going to use constraints in order to attach it to my, uh, uh, at a set distance from my center point. I'm going to use vertical constraint first in order to lock it into place above my center point. If for some reason your yellow line is going horizontally now, then you just switch to using a horizontal constraint. It has to do with what rotation you have on your view cube. So that it has to do with how the sketch was, was placed basically. So it's not a, not a big problem if you have to use the horizontal one instead, or you're going to, to achieve the same goal. So in my case, vertical was the correct one. So I click on my point, and then I click on the center point of the sketch. So now it's locked into place above my center point. I can drag and drop it up and down, but I can't move it to the sides anymore. Then I'm going to use dimension. And I'm going to set the dimension from that point and to the center.
and it's supposed to be 52.1. Now when we are going forward we can either create a circular pattern with this point and create four, four points in total uh, around this center point or we can finish the sketch, create a hole on that point and then use a circular pattern on that hole and creating uh, four holes. So it doesn't really matter which one we use. Uh, in this case I think we'll do finish sketch and we're going to place the first hole. And then it automatically selects the, the threaded hole that we made previously. But this is going to be a clearance hole because we're going to put a bolt through it. So we need to go back to, back to the clearance hole option. And it's still going to be ISO as the standard, still going to be hexagonal head cap screw. But the size isn't going to be M20, it's going to be M12. So we're switching the size to M12. And with a close fit, we can see that it's going to create a diameter of 13 millimeters for this hole. And that's perfect for us in this case. And we want the termination to be through all, so that it's going to cut through the entire flange. And once we've done that, we just click OK. So that places our first hole. Then we're going to use a circular pattern. So we go up here to circular pattern. We click it. Then we select the new hole that we have over there. Whoops. That will be our feature. Then we're going to select our rotation axis. So we need to mark, mark that button. And then we're going to click on the 
cylindrical edge of our disk. Because then it chooses the center point of our flange. But now it's set up with a default of six holes. We don't want six holes, we want four holes. So we'll change it to four. And we can see immediately where, he's, uh, where Inventor is going to place, place our four holes. Once you've gotten the pattern into place, you can press OK. And we've got all four holes there. So I'm going to quickly show you uh, how to put dimensions on your, uh, your uh, internal threads and the clearance holes. So I'm going to just uh, save this one. I saved it before I restarted, so I don't have to fill in the name or anything. And then I'm going to, to start a drawing for it. So up on the new button and then iso.idw. Hopefully Inventor will behave this time when I'm going to double click on the dimension. So I'm placing the base view here. And I'm just going to quickly create a section through it so that we can see, see the internal threads. And we can see here that we get the same, uh, same uh, thread designation as we could see on, uh, on the shaft. It's showing one of the thread diameters inside the material with a thinner line. So when we're going to put dimensions on it, we go up to annotate. And again, it's the hole and thread function in order to put it into place. And when we're putting, putting the dimension on, on the internal threads, make sure that you're choosing the thin lines on the outsides so that we're showing the full uh, 20 millimeter diameter here. So we'll click on the thin outer lines and pull down. So make sure you put it from the thin outer lines when you put it down there. I'm going to check if I can edit this one. Now it wanted to edit it for some reason. Probably help with the restart.
So, just to show you slightly what you can do here, if you have something very special, when you hover your mouse above the uh, different buttons here, you can have a thread designation value. You can set a custom value if you need to show something really special. You can have your pitch value, which is the 1.5. You can have a, a classification of your threads. You can show the depth so that if you're not creating threads that are going all the way through the hole, if you're only creating them for a certain depth, you can add the depth option and it's going to tell how many millimeters into the hole it's going to be threaded. You can also put in what the diameter of the drill bit is going to be in order to, to create the hole. <clears throat> and there's a couple of other options also uh, for clearance holes. So now I'm just going to put the hole and thread function on the clearance hole here. And for the clearance holes, for some reason, you can't put it as a diameter. I don't, I don't quite know why Inventor chooses to do this, but it's always been that way. I'm going to change it to method 1B. Then I'm going to double click it just to show you some of the options there. Because here we have three buttons with uh, small pictures of bolts on them. And if we hover over the first one here, it says fastener type. So if I create a new line up here and I click fastener type, and I create another line and I move over to the next button, it says fastener size. So I click that one also, I create a new line and I move over to the last button, fastener fit value and I click that one also. When I now click OK, it's going to create three more lines down here, giving me more information about this clearance hole. So when I click OK, we're going to see here, it's a 13 millimeter hole and it's going all the way through. That's fair enough. That's basically all you need to machine this hole. But this extra information tells you that you're going to put a hexagonal head cap screw through that hole that, uh, that cap screw is going to be an M12 size and the fitting for this hole, the reason why it's 13 millimeters is that you have a close fit for this M12. So suddenly you have quite a lot more information than just this being a 13 millimeter hole. I'm just going to save that drawing and then we'll do a break before we start on the next part.